float plane. We're officially dropped off for the next week. Bear hunt. See you, Doug. Blowing up our pack grass. Getting ready to head up the bay to our cabin. Well, uh, this last spring, um, myself and my best friend, Jesse, headed up to Southeast Alaska on a black bear hunt. Um, this is something that we were lo really looking forward to. It'd been 18 months nearly since we'd drawn the tag until now we're here. And um, we're in the wilds of Alaska, got dropped off by a float plane and, and really looking forward to the next week that we're gonna be able to spend together. You know that first day that we were there, um, couldn't hunt because we'd flown in that day, so decided to kind of get all of our gear consolidated and, and, and taken care of in the cabin that we were gonna be staying in. Go ahead and shoot the gun, um, make sure that everything was sighted in and, and get Jesse also comfortable with the gun since I brought it, um, as well as we had to get water and just kind of taking care of the camp stuff that we needed to do. Here we are, we got dropped off by a float plane um, and uh, we're just excited for the next week. All right, so Dale and I first met back in tech school. Tech school is uh, the school that you go to right after basic training. We were both in the Air Force together and that's where we met. It was down in Florida almost 20 years ago now. Dale and I hit it off right off the bat. Shared interests in music and the outdoors and kind of upbringing, even though we we're both from opposite ends of the country, him being from Florida, me being from Oregon. Um, we had a lot of common interests, which was cool. So uh, we just kind of started a brotherhood right off the bat and that grew over time. Um, our families became close. Uh, we went through a lot of stuff together, you know, life, deployments, um, marriage uh you know our families got close and it we just became like brothers all right so first night here in alaska and we actually came back to camp early tonight because we got absolutely poured on all day long while we were out we did like eight miles this, uh, today just kind of checking different days but we're sitting up there eating some uh, dinner real quick. Just happened to look over and straight across from where we're staying, back in this bay, a bear pops out. We were watching some deer and stuff like that. It's all a bear. Can't tell how big it is because good little ways out there, but we're gonna try to get the wind in our face and just make a move.
we got up against this tree line. The wind was just kind of slowly filtering that way. And I was trying to essentially beat it, but I don't know. Obviously that doesn't work. But it's a decent bear. He wasn't a giant by no means, but had fun nonetheless. Made a mad dash. Covered a lot of country really quick. We know he's here, so he'll probably be somewhere out on one of these beaches. The next morning we woke up, it was kind of raining a little bit, but um, we saw or what we thought was going to be some clear skies, so we decided to head out. We're feeling good, like we got close to a bear on literally our first evening that we can hunt here. Um, so looking forward to the rest of the hunt. So tonight is the second night that we can hunt here in Alaska and we decided to try something different. It's been kind of rainy, overcast all day long. The wind is kind of whipping up into the bay so we kind of stayed on the east side of the drainage and worked all the way up and we're almost to the point of like or close to the head of this drainage. And our thought process was to get in here, you know, three hours before dark, four hours before dark, and then start to kind of work back towards the cabin and kind of look at all these little coves that are kind of back behind us here. So that's what we're doing right now. We're waiting out yet another rainstorm. I know you can't really see it. It's kind of starting to stop, but, but now we're getting into position, hoping that the wind will kind of die down, you know, that last, couple hours before dark and hopefully a bear gets out comes out gives us a shot this place back here is crazy cool it's like really really tall grass gotta be bear somewhere in here we just have to be see him at the right time and hopefully get the wind right and not have a switch on us like happened last night so we'll see
here in the lane and shit. I think he's got a pretty good head. 375 H and H, that thing is rocking. Rock shit. Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that was my first kill with a double rifle. <laughs> Did you use the right trigger or the left trigger? Yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the right trigger. Yeah, back to the Yeah, right's left. Right's left, yep. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good job, bud. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Well, second night of hunting here in Alaska. And we got a bear down. And we still have time, but we're gonna yeah, have to deal with this bear. So. I mean, at least it's not too bad of a walk back, you know? That was cold. <laughs> Dude, we were close. We were like 85. Yeah. Or, or less now, where I shot. It's perfect, because we said we need to shoot about 100 yards away. That's how you do it. Ditch. Or he's probably walking right there actually. You can see. It looks like he's got a melon. Yeah, looks like a decent bear. Well, the 375 H H did a number on this amazing bear. Um, he's got a big old head. I mean he's not super long. He's probably close to six foot, give or take. Um, he was just down in this depression as he kind of moved and I mean we could just see his back just a little bit as he was kind of sneaking in there and uh he was just feeding along feeding along and luckily we were able to come off these trees that we're looking at you know that's only 350 400 yards away and make this big circle get the wind just absolutely perfect and sneak right into him so um ended up shooting him right at like 90 yards and I mean for this double rifle this Shapui here uh, couldn't have asked for a better way to kill an Alaskan spring bear and man this is awesome this is only our second day of hunting we've already seen six bears now um, and I was able to you know sneak right in and get a shot on this one so really really cool uh, Jesse did a great job like right there behind me so now it's time to get him a bear and we got a lot of days left i mean we were we came in here for you know a full week seven days we wanted to give ourselves as much time as we could especially with um you know having limited limited range capabilities you know with this big gun but you know it, it's going to be great so awesome awesome bear time to cut him up and and get everything taken care of and we can almost see where the cabin's at from here. So we're not too far away, so we can uh, make the hike back. It won't be too bad, I think. Rain's kind of come in and past, and it's becoming a gorgeous evening, and can't be more thankful for this bear. What do we got going on here, Jesse? Well, I minced up some of uh, Dale's bear backstrap, and we're gonna add it to our gastronome Italian sausage rigatoni. So we're gonna uh, get this browned up and then put a little beef broth in there and kind of stew it and then add the rigatoni and have it all come together. At least that's the plan. <laughs> bon appetit. That'll do. Day three, we woke up. Uh, we're kind of taking it easy in the morning. We got uh, Dale's uh, bear. We got it, the skull taken out of it. We got the hide fleshed pretty good, and then we uh, treated it with salt because it's just everything's so damp here. And we got that hung up. 
got that taken care of, just took it easy. And then we made a nice afternoon hunt back up to the north again, but into some of the areas that we didn't get to the day before because we ran into that bear so quickly. Well, today's been pretty slow. Uh, weather's been pretty rainy, so we've spent most of the day at the cabin, just kind of overlooking the, the bay here. And uh, we're interested in this uh, inlet that kind of we can't see from the cabin, and it's uh, back behind this wood line. So we're gonna go up the bay, cloverleaf it, get the wind right, and uh, make that our evening hunt. We're gonna spot and stalk through there. Um, there's some nice little parks and some open areas in there that we're interested in that we just haven't been into yet. So we're gonna go check it out. Weather's kind of clearing up for us and uh, see what we can get into. And all these little black stumps or like black areas underneath these uh, fir boughs or evergreen boughs, they get you looking a lot. One of them's gonna turn into a big black bear though. Uh, I think the, the hunt is starting to wear on both Dale and I a little bit. We're operating on a, a calorie deficit a little bit, not eating as much. Plus we, we had a couple days where we went for pretty good hikes. Not anything extreme, it's not tough terrain here, but it's just wet, you're sweating or you're getting wet and then you're getting cold. Um, and it just starts to wear on you. The long days, you only got about three hours of uh, darkness here at this time of year. So naturally you're just, you're up trying to find bears, spending a lot, a lot of time behind glass. And day six, it just, it was crummy weather and we kind of just hung out around the cabin, glass from the porch. And we didn't see anything in the morning, I think, Two, what is it, about 2 p.m. I decided, hey, I'm gonna lay down for a little bit. Wake me up at, at three. All right, it's our second to last day and uh, it's early afternoon. Rain just broke off and uh, I laid down, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, I laid down, and as soon as I zipped up my sleeping bag, Dale says, bear. I thought he was messing with me, but uh, so, got up and got him in the spotter. We kind of lost him in this long grass out here. He's probably only seven, 800 yards out here. So we're just gonna try and pick him up back up, get the wind right and head out. You know, after I was able to take that bear and um, we had our hopes up so high, um, unfortunately, we just had really crummy weather uh, for the next couple of days. We did see a few bears, we were able to make a few stalks, but I kind of look back at this hunt and yes, we were able to go to Alaska. I was able to take a great bear, but it was just so awesome to be able to spend time with Jesse. Um, we don't get to do that as much as we used to when we were in the military. so. Being able to do that was really important for me um, to get, you know, a week away up in a really remote area, no cell phone service, uh, just him and I 
being able to crack up, cut jokes, uh, have a good time, listen to music, you know, it was, it was really cool. Just so great to catch up. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, we had the float plane coming and it was time to, uh, head back to reality and, and back to the world. Old Doug's coming through. We're about out of real estate here. 